his Everest, summit of the world, a world above the world, high, savage, frozen. The mountain is huge, and man is small. But man is here, man the seeker, the challenger. These will be the first Americans to climb the greatest of mountains. to Everest is long. It begins on the other side of the world, on Mount Rainier in the state of Washington, where the men of the first American Mount Everest expedition, under the leadership of Norman Durenfirth, undergo a period of training and testing. They range in age from the middle 20s to the middle 40s. They come from all parts of our country. In their low-level lives, they are business and professional men from many fields, of many interests but they're also among the top mountaineers of the United States. And here, out of many individuals, there emerges a team. The training continues for strength and endurance. And, well, more strength. While an oxygen mask, soon to be the difference between life and death, becomes the latest in beach wear. More than two years have been spent in preparation, assembling the team, assembling the food, clothing, shelter, and climbing gear that the expedition will need on the mountain. And now the adventure begins, around the world, toward the top of the world. Mount Everest, monarch of the Himalaya, stands on the high frontier between Nepal and Tibet. And the jumping off place is Nepal's capital, Kathmandu. The date is February, 1963. Held in a geopolitical vice between India and communist China, the kingdom of Nepal is a cockpit for the international pressures of our time. But it also belongs to an older civilization, the civilization of historical Asia, Hindu and Buddhist. Earth's highest mountain is part of it. But here it is not known as Mount Everest. It is Chomolungma, the goddess mother of the world. Prayer flags speak the litany of an ancient faith. The eyes of Buddha watch the strangers from the west. In the compound of Kathmandu's Hotel Royal, the expedition checks and sorts its gear. Medical supplies, oxygen apparatus. A total of 27 tons of food and equipment. At Road's End, beyond Kathmandu, the long trek begins with leader Durenfirth and transport officer Jimmy Roberts, the expedition's only Englishman, checking the long lists. Onto the mountain of the climbers will go 37 Sherpas members of the famous hill tribe that has played so great a part in Himalayan mountaineering. But more than 900 low-level porters are needed for the carry-in to the base of Everest. The distance to be covered is about 180 miles. For most of it, the route runs due east. Then, reaching the home country of the Sherpa people, the area of Solo Kumbu, it turns north toward Everest. From Kathmandu to the heart of Solokumbu will take the marches, 16 days. To the north looms the high Himalaya, roof of the world. But Everest itself will not appear until its challenges are close beneath it.
day after day through endless hours. There are many miles between the head and the tail of the column, and the weight of the loads averages 65 pounds. At each day's end, a campsite, food, and rest. Climbers Jim Whitaker and Dan Doody, Jake Breitenbach and Barry Prather, Lute Jerstadt and Willie Unsold, and already the beards are sprouting. Busiest of all are the team's doctors. Later they'll have their hands full taking care of the climbers, but now their work is largely with the porters and people of the countryside. Up and down, down and up goes the caravan. A vast millipede, a roller coaster in slow motion. It is a wild, steep trail. Many expeditions have followed it toward the high Himalaya. For six of them, before this one, the destination has been Everest, and two have climbed it to the top. The British in 1953, the Swiss in 1956. But this is the first time that a full-scale American team has even approached the Lord of Mountains. Toza, the largest village on the route. And it's not only the eyes of Buddha that watch the strangers from the west. In every valley, there is a rushing stream. Over every stream, a bridge of sorts. Some are high, some low. They're made of chains, of logs, of woven fibers. None is ever inspected. Many collapse or are swept away. Hundreds of porters have already crossed. And then, suddenly... Some of the men have fallen onto the rocks and lie stunned. Others, weighted down by their loads, struggle in the torrent. And none can swim. At last pulled out, no one is drowned. And though there are painful cuts and bruises, none is serious. Even here, the expedition has been lucky. But if the luck will hold, no one knows. The trail climbs higher. Kathmandu is about 4,000 feet above sea level. Base camp at the foot of Everest will be at almost 18,000 feet. And still there are bridges, always more bridges. The low types are often washed away in flooding waters, and great care is taken by the expedition to safeguard lives. But for the men of Nepal, it's all old and familiar, all in a day's work. And for the women and children, too. And the caravan passes through Sherpa villages. Buddhist world of shrines and prayer trees. The trail becomes steep, the air thin, the earth harsh and savage. Ahead is the kingdom of snow. Near the threshold of Everest is the Buddhist monastery of Tangboche, one of the last outposts of the inhabited world. It's early in the month of March, the expedition is held up for five days by a late winter snowstorm. For the Sherpas, this is normal home country, but most of the Americans are ailing from the altitude, which is already 13,000 feet, and they welcome the chance to rest and acclimatize. The mountain world is close, now looming in dawn light under the moon. And through the next week, the expedition pushes on into the heartland of the Himalaya. Yaks help with the heavy going. Firewood is carried in for use at base camp. The way leads up the white wilderness of the Kumbu Glacier, a realm of ghostly white shapes 
known as Phantom Alley. The goal is near, very near. And now the earth leaps upward, higher. Here is the great trinity that forms the highest mountain mass on Earth. To the right, Nupse, meaning West Peak. In the center, Lhotse, the South Peak. And to the left, Everest, 29,028 feet above the sea. At its foot, more than 11,000 feet below, is base camp. From here, a route must first be forged up the Kumbu Icefall, a wild labyrinth of ice squeezed between the shoulders of Everest and Nupse. Camp one will, hopefully, be placed at the top of the icefall. Camp two, the advance base, up the glaciated valley above it, called the Western Coombe. Base camp is established at the foot of the icefall in March at 17,800 feet. For two months to come, this will be the world's highest community, with dozens of tents, a well-built kitchen, a sort of Kumbu plaza on the rock-strewn glacier. A dangerous world waits above, hurling avalanches down in white fury. All eyes are lifted. All hearts beat faster. Now base camp is a going concern. The hundreds of low-level porters have gone down to the valleys, leaving only the climbers and mountain sherpas, plus the crows. At this height, birds are the only other living creatures. Mount Everest supermarket and the mess tent. This is the place not only for chow, but for planning the campaign ahead. And the master plan is that Everest will be attacked by two separate routes. One will be the route followed by previous expeditions.